Okay, are you ready to improve in algebra? Well, how do you improve in anything? Well, it comes down to practice. And we're going to practice solving this equation here, which, of course, is basic foundational algebra. Now, uh, if you think you can solve this equation, certainly pause the video and go ahead and solve for t. I'm going to walk you through this step by step, and I'm going to kind of give you a bit of a hint or an overview of what you need to do, and then you can kind of see if you can do it from that point forward. But if you, uh, of course, think you can solve this, I think you'll make uh, the most use of the most use of the video by uh, doing the work fir first, and then seeing how I solve the problem. But as long as you get the solution, that uh, really counts. Now, let me just say one additional thing. The way you write your work, okay, you want to be neat and structured and uh, go step by step. So maybe you're going to be doing, when you do your work, if you think you could do this, maybe you'll take the correct steps. But unfortunately, you might make an error someplace, okay, that threw you off. Well, you can kind of grade yourself when you see my work. So that's why you always want to do algebra or any math by, you know, being neat, organized, and showing all your work. But we're going to get into all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link uh, to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are uh, if you are having a tough time in math, maybe you've been having a tough time with math for years. Maybe you don't think you're good in math. I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. Um, if you have the desire to want to be good at math, that's pretty much the starting point. Okay? You have to have that. But beyond that, what you're going to need is excellent math instruction. So if you don't feel like you're getting enough instruction or if you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style, I can help you. I've been teaching math for decades, and I really pride myself on breaking all the little steps you need to know in simple, clear, and understandable bite-sized pieces. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level, in terms of mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool math courses and curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want excellent grades in math, you must learn how to take excellent math notes. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Now, if you have your solution, put that into the comment section or any other feedback that you want. Maybe you're like, yeah, I, I don't know what to do with this part of the problem. Uh, but, you know, put some feedback into the comment section. I think that's useful. Now, um, as I indicated, I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of how to do this problem without actually doing it right now. I'm going to give you kind of the steps, and then we'll see what you can do here, okay? All right, so... Anytime you're dealing with an equation and you see parentheses like this with the variable in it, so you have like a plus or a minus, a sum or a difference, and a number or a variable outside these parentheses, this is where you need to start. Um, uh, this is like the first step in equations. So right here and right here are two places where we have to apply something called the distributor property. Okay, So this is going to be your first steps. So you're going to take the distributor property on both of these right here, and then you're going to put the results of that right there. So we have this 5t minus the results of the distributor property, and then we have this over here. Now, when you're solving any equation, what you need to do after that is you want to combine like terms. On both sides of the equation, combine like terms, i.e. If, uh, if we have t's over here on the left-hand side or t's over here on the right-hand side that we can combine or numbers that we can uh, combine, we want to go ahead and simplify. And then you're going to take some steps to get all your variables to the left and all your numbers to the right. Okay, And eventually you're going to end up with what we call a one-step equation. And then finally you're going to go ahead and solve for that one variable. Okay, So this is the basic overview. Now if you feel like you, you know, understand what I'm saying, then take this as a kind of a you know guide map and see what you can do. Okay, Go ahead and first see if you can apply the distributor property correctly. And if you can't, well, you know you're going to have to work on the distributor property. But I'm going to get into the actual solution right now. So if you don't want to see it, go ahead and pause the video. But let's get to it. And here is the work. Okay, so as I said, we're going to have to focus on the distributor property in these two places. Okay, so this, is, this means I'm going to have to take this negative 2, 
okay? It's the sine, not the two. It's plus negative two, if you want to think of it that way. And multiply that negative two times this t and this one. And when I do that, I get negative two t and this negative two. And of course, I have my five t right there. Now, when I distribute this six to this two t and this six to this three right there, I'm going to get 12t minus 18. Okay, so that's the first step that you need to do. Okay, so if you got that right, well, then go ahead. I will give you a little check mark. Very good. So now, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and scope out what we have remaining on the left hand side and the right hand side and see if we can combine any like terms or numbers together. So I'm looking on, let's take a look at the right hand side. I'm like, well, I have a 12t and an 18. I can't combine anything here. But over here, I have a 5t and negative 2t. I can definitely combine these two, these are like terms, into 3t. So I'm going to have 3t minus 2 is equal to 12t minus 18. Okay, now notice I'm just taking one step at a time. So if let's say, for example, you wrote out all your work like this, and I'm uh, grading it, and you said 5t minus 2t, and let's say you, you put 2t there, okay? I would say, okay, you had the right idea. You made an arithmetic mistake, okay? You just added incorrectly, and that can happen, but it, you, you know, you're still showing your teacher that you know what you're doing. So we took this step, well, we're down right here. So we have 3t minus 2 is equal to 12t minus 18. Okay, so what do we do at this time, at this point in the problem? Well, here we're gonna wanna get all of our variable terms to the left and all our number terms to the right. So it doesn't make a difference uh, if you want to start with the numbers of the variables, but what we have to understand, this negative 2, I want to link it over to the other side of the equation uh, with that negative 18. And this 12t, okay, is a variable, I want it on the left-hand side, so I'm going to have to link it up with this uh, 3t, okay? So what we'll do is we'll first work on moving this negative 2 to the other side of the equation. Now, how do I do that? Well, if I have a negative 2 on the left-hand side, if I add a 2 to a negative 2, it makes that disappear, okay? It disappears its, you know, away from the left-hand side. So I say, oh, look at that. That's wonderful magic. I can just go negative 2 plus 2. It just, wow, makes it go away. Well, here's the deal. In algebra, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you must do that exact same thing to the other side of the equation to keep that equation in balance. So notice the format I'm working uh, in here. I'm adding a number to a number, so I'm adding this 2 to this number over here. And that's why I have this up lined up in a common uh, column format. So now I'm going to add down in a column format. I get 3t plus nothing is 3t. I have negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That goes away, so I don't need to write 3t plus 0. It's just a 3t. So I have 12t plus nothing is 12t, and negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. So make sure you're good to go on your positive and negative numbers right here. Okay, so if you made an error, you know what you need to work on. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. And of course, I'm moving the numbers over. Maybe you wanted to uh, move the variables over. It doesn't make a difference. We'll end up at the same place. So now, let's go ahead and move our variable. It's on the right. We have a variable on the right-hand side, or variable term. We want to get that over to the left-hand side. So I need to subtract a 12t away from that positive 12t. That will definitely remove this whole variable on the uh, right-hand side of the equation. I want to move it to the left-hand side. So it's going to be 12t minus uh, 12t. But again, if I'm going to add a negative 12t to this side of the equation, i got to do it on this side of the equation. Okay. Then I'm going to add down in a column manner. I get positive 3t minus 12t is negative 9t. 12t minus 12t is 0. That's what I wanted. And then I just have my negative 16 here. And now we're almost right uh, down to the end of the problem. Okay, so I'm, at this point, I have negative 9t is equal to negative 16. So how do I solve for t? Well, in this case, we just need to divide both sides of the equation by negative 9. Okay, so that leaves me with t. Let's actually do it this way. When you do that, you get t is equal to negative 16 divided by negative 9, but a negative divided by a negative, which we have right here, is a positive. Okay, so t will be equal to a positive 16 over 9, and we can't reduce that. So that is the final answer. Okay, now let me just say one other thing here. You don't need to turn this into a mixed number or decimal. As long as you simplify um, and reduce your fractions down, this would be a perfectly uh, acceptable answer. But if you got this right, then I must go ahead and give you a nice happy face with a good old 1981 Mohawk and A plus and 
outstanding, okay? So very, very good. But here's the deal, right? Let's say you got this right, but you didn't show all your steps. Well, you know, mathematics, algebra is, you know, a language, okay? You want to think of each one of these as a sentence, all right? And this is like a paragraph, okay? So this is a story. You're telling the story of how to uh, solve this equation, all right? And you're, you're, you know, we don't tell a story like, um, you know, once upon a time there was and then the end, <laughs> you know, where like, where's the story? So that's why you can't go from here all the way down to your solution, your teacher to be like, well, that's not that good of a story. Uh, so, you know, uh, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Okay. Remember you're communicating in, uh, with mathematics. That's why you must be neat and clear. It's no different than the English language or any other language. Okay. You got to show your words. You got to write clear sentences and you got to follow the rules of that language. And that's, you know, what we're talking about here in that format of the language as well. So uh, hopefully, you know, this was a good little review uh, for you. Again, you know, what's the whole idea here? Well, if you want to get better in algebra, there's only one way to do that is you got to practice, but you got to practice correctly, okay? You just can't, you know, keep poor habits if you're like doing a problem wrong and then you just try to do that problem wrong over and over again. That's actually you're practicing bad habits, okay? So if you're fr uh, frustrated, you got to slow down and figure out how to do nice, basic, simple problems, get really good at that, and then start moving your way up. But uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, help me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll uh, uh, subscribe. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math, two advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of all that content. And uh, of course, my best math help will always be within my math help program. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.